You can do a lot of cool things with IBM Forms Experience Builder, but in some cases you may want to extend its functionality by bringing in an external JavaScript library or multiple libraries. Take for instance this application. I've got a jQuery data table which is being populated through a Feb REST call and I'm able to click on a row and see the form rendered to the right. The data table is responsive, it's got search, and makes for a nice presentation. Well how did I do this? So when working with JavaScript libraries you'll quickly find out that timing is everything, particularly if you have multiple JS files. The order that those files load is important. There could be dependencies between the files which means that one needs to be completed before the other one can start loading. So how did we do this? Well first let's take a look at the application on start because this is what actually does the loading of the JS file. So it's a function. If you're not familiar with app get shared data you should be. It's, it's a way in the application on start to set up a global variable. In this case the global variable is the load script function. It has an input which is a URL and then makes a callback. So in the on form new I'm actually declaring the different URLs. So this is the JavaScript library that I'm first loading. It's the uh, jQuery min.js and then the data tables is next and then the data table tools. So the function I have here it's app get shared load script and you notice I'm doing URL 1, URL 2, URL 3. Now let me take a look at this in Sublime because it's a little easier on the eyes. Here you can see URL 1, URL 2, URL 3. And the magic is in calling that, that global variable, the load script function. So what I'm going to do is copy this to the clipboard. And in the callback section here, I'll expand this to give myself a little bit more room. I'll paste that in and I'll change the URL to 2. And then I'll do it again. Paste it in and change that URL to 3. So what this means is that it's going to load the libraries in this particular order. And then when all three are loaded, I can then do my work and I can do that in here. So when I look at my application, you can see one, two, three, they're loaded. And then in the open parens, the callback for that third library which is loaded is to make the rest call. So this is the standard jQuery for making the rest call. I build my URL out here. I get the JSON back from Forms Experience Builder. I then process this information and then the final thing I do is I load the table with that information. So that's standard jQuery data tables, but the key for me was learning, out, learning how to load these libraries in the right fashion. Now this technique I've used over and over again in many different examples. So let's take a look at a few more examples. I'll start with signaturepad.js. You can find this on GitHub. It's now my favorite signature pad technology to work with Forms Experience Builder. It's got a nice smooth pen style. I've got it set up so I've got one signature pad and I can direct the output to multiple spots. Typically need multiple signatures on a document. You can see that it saves the data down below here. So that had to load before I could then issue any JavaScript to interact with it. Another example we'll take a look at, uh, Textbox.io. So this is bar none the best rich text editor out there, JavaScript rich text editor. Uh, just purely a technology demo in this particular case. Uh, so I'm loading the Textbox.io library. I'm rendering it right here. Let's go grab this information out of Excel. I'll copy that to the clipboard, come over here, and paste it in keep the formatting. Of course one of the reasons we love Textbox.io is because it's got this fantastic fidelity with Microsoft products. So there you can see this button it generated this markup which I'm surfacing in a uh, multi-line field and then I'm taking that markup and I'm rendering it in another Feb uh, HTML widget. 
Uh, another example, let's take a look at using a combination of signaturepad.js and PDF make. So in this particular case, I've got a form that comes up and it's loading, I believe, four different libraries uh, as well as uh, jQuery. So what I can do is go ahead and start populating this document. And I'll put the uh, zip code in here, calling out to, to Google for the zip code uh, fill. And let's say I want to borrow $50,000. Here I've got my signature pad. I can go ahead and sign that. And when I save the signature, it's going to take the rendition of that, the image, and show me that and take away the pad. And then finally, I have this button here, which is going to take this information and generate a PDF. So this is not an attached PDF to uh, the FEB application, but rather I'm using the, the, the make PDF JS library to make this from, from scratch. So I press this, it generates the PDF. You can see that it's passing this information into the PDF as well as the, uh, the image for the signature. So lots of useful examples of bringing JavaScript functionality into Forms Experience Builder. And the key that I found was using this technique of loading the libraries in the right order with callbacks and then tying it to this global variable. Hope that's helpful. Thank you.